Good evening, everybody. I'm humbled and honored and privileged to be part of this ceremony tonight. I welcome everybody on behalf of Derek Tomix and his family and Mayor Meyer to the council chambers. And this is a beautiful time of year here in the chambers. It's always a great for a ceremony like this. So let us begin tonight with in prayer. And I'd like to call up uh, Sharon, please, to do the prayer. Will you join me in prayer? Most gracious and eternal God, our Father, Father, we thank you for the gift of our city. Whereas we acknowledge you as the supreme ruler of justice, yet you have placed in the hands of mere minor city officials, dignitary, the solemn duty of governing our citizens of this great city. Father, we seek your continuous blessings upon our community at large. Father, in the course of heaven on this day, you ordained December 28, 2016, as a swearing in of Derek T. Thomas to Syracuse City Court Judge. We solicit your presence at this ceremony this evening. And Father, as Derek embarks upon a new beginning into our court system, and as he is sworn in, I pray, O oh God, that you will bless him just like you blessed Solomon in biblical days. Father, I ask you to continue to bless Derek with prudence, knowledge, and discernment to adhere to the struggles and the challenges of our modern day situations. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for you have blessed yet another judge to exhibit integrity, intelligence, education, experience, patience, courage, compassion, oh yes, and humility. Father, we ask a special blessing upon his family, oh God. Oh God, I pray that you will bless his wife, Jay. Oh God, we thank you for his four children, Jared, Derek Jr., Liana, Jared, and Gaia. And Father, we thank you for the witness and the testimony of his dear mother and his father. Bless his mother-in-law. Oh God, we ask you to bless his immediate and ex extended family. Father, I pray that you will cover them. I pray that you will cover every person that is here with your divine presence. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, daughter, Derek's daughter, Leanna, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice job. I'd like to recognize a few of our honored guests here tonight. Uh, elected officials, Judge Steve Doherty. Judge Vanessa Bogan, Judge Julie Cecil, Judge Marianne Doherty, Judge Ross Andrews, Judge James Cecil, Legislator Peggy Chase, Counselor Joe Nicoletti, Council President Van Robinson, Assemblywoman Pam Hunter, Judge Ted Limper, and retired Judge Langston McKinney. I think I got everybody. I hope so. Now, uh, one of the pleasures I have of doing this is that uh, I've gotten to know Derek very well over the years, and I want to tell a couple of stories about Derek that perhaps you don't know. First of all, uh, Derek fancies himself as an athlete, not to be confused as a golfer. <laughs> and if he was here, I was going to tell uh, Judge McMahon that he, in fact, can get the ball airborne, so uh, he shouldn't worry about uh, beating uh, Judge Thomas, soon to be Judge Thomas. Also, Derek's sport is really basketball, and I know that many nights, Tuesday evenings, the gang here, the younger guys, play basketball. So Derek uh, can be part of the city court team. He can be the center, and Judge Cecil can go back to his natural position, which would be small forward. <laughs> Sorry, Judge. My wife told me not to do it, but I did it anyway. The other thing I want you to know about Derek, and, and this is a very good thing, is that Derek does not use any bad language. Not that anybody in City Hall would use any bad language, of course. 
But sometimes it, it does prove to be a, a bit difficult and a little bit of frustration. But Derek substitutes bleep when he's going to use. He's laughing back there. He knows it's true. So sometimes after some an arbitration or a difficult negotiation, uh, Bob Staley and Derek and I would reconnoiter in my office, and Derek would say, I think that guy was giving us a little bleep. <laughs> and that arbitrator, he was a bit of a pain in the bleep. Or sometimes he would double bleep us with such pearls as, that didn't go so well today, and I think that bleep bleep pulled a fast one on us, and we're bleeped. <laughs> So one time I turned and I said to Bob Stamey, do you know what the hell he's talking about? <laughs> and while I intended this story to be humorous, it begins to speak of what kind of man Derek Thomas is. He's a gentleman, he's a role model to his children and others, and he's a true, truly humble and dedicated public service in every sense of the word. As I got to know Derek over the years as both our labor attorney and personnel director, I was struck how every day he worked to make himself better a better man and a better professional. He would listen to tapes on various subjects, read everything from the newspaper to the Bible, and seek out people from every walk of life in order to learn and empathize what was going on in their world. There are just some of the qualities that led Mayor Minor to appointing Derek to the bench. I will close with one story, and that is we began with Derek and I would discuss business, and a lot of times in negotiations, he would come to me very, very close to having a deal, and he'd come to me for that deal. And I'd think about it, and I'd say, okay, Derek, for you, I'm going to do it. And he'd say, I love you too, Bill. <laughs> but he did. And last Friday night, when we had a dinner for Derek, his, his personnel folks, I saw his farewell dinner, that the respect that was in that room was palpable. Derek brought people from various backgrounds together and made them all better. I am better for knowing Derek. As we close out 2016, not the best year so far, perhaps it says we need a little bit more of going forward. We have a keeper in Derek Thomas. With that, I would like to now call on my dear friend, Honorable Mary Ann Doherty, City Court Judge, for a few. Thank you, Bill. Um, I met Derek in, I think it was like 2012, 2013, when I was serving as Corporation Counsel for the City of Syracuse. We were hiring at the time, and um, while everyone looks good on paper typically, not everyone is the same in person. Um, but when we called, Joe Barry was with me when we were hiring Derek. He came in for an interview, and as soon as he came in and we started talking to him, we knew Derek was someone very, very special. Derek was honest. He was very thoughtful in his responses when we were talking to him. He, was, he seemed trustworthy in what he was saying. And when he left, Joe Barry and I thought, we have to hire this guy. Um, he's just a superstar. So we hired Derek to do labor, which he had never done. Um, and we said, here you go. And he was, very, uh, he was very willing to do it. And he learned labor on his own by himself. And he was wonderful at it. He was, everybody liked Derek, he was well prepared, he was very well liked, and everybody enjoyed it. And I used to hear this from other department heads and other people that would tell me about Derek, about how great he was. And as Corporation Counsel, I learned a couple of things in managing people. And there, there are two kind of, two kind of groups of people uh, when you're managing. And there are people that come in your office every single day or several times a week so that they get face time with you and they want you to know what they're doing and that they're working hard and they, they just tell you everything that's going on in their lives. And then there's the other group and you see them hardly, a couple times a month maybe. They check in with you if you have an emergency. They want you to help them with the emergency or they just want to check in. And Derek was the latter. He would come in maybe a couple times a month. Um, and. So when I ended up getting to know him better was uh, I always had a, a bowl, a bin of candy outside my office because I love candy. And it was for me, but I put it outside my office so I wouldn't eat it all the time. But Derek would stroll down usually on a Friday. And he'd come down to get some candy. And then he'd kind of hang out or outside the office. And he'd be talking to people. And then all of a sudden, I'd come out. 
and we'd be chit-chatting, and that's when I kind of got to know him. He would talk about what he liked to do. I knew he liked to go to comedy clubs on Fridays, and he, I learned that one of his sons wanted to play football, and we would talk, and ultimately, he would end up in my office, and we'd be sitting there having a much more detailed conversation about life and our families, and I just thoroughly enjoyed seeing him. And when I was thinking about talking about Derek, when he asked me to say a few words, I was thinking how much I always enjoyed seeing him. Like when he would come and he'd come out on Fridays, I just loved seeing him. And I realized it was because Derek made me feel so good about the job that I was doing. He was so very positive. He loved his job. He loved working for the city. He had great ideas. And I just wanted to thank him for that because there were some times when I needed that. And if I have any bits of advice, and I want to thank him for letting me speak at his, his special day here today, uh, one bit of advice that I would give Derek is to just be yourself um, because the grace and the dignity that you're going to bring to the bench is going to serve you and all of us very well. Thanks very much. That was very good. Thank you. And it's now for the moment we've been waiting for, for the mayor to swear Derek in. I will give you two bits of advice, Derek, and then this will be it. I don't know what I'm going to get you in more trouble. Don't forget your wife, and don't forget to sign the book. <laughs> so um, I was struck as I listened to everyone who came before me. I thought to myself, Man, what a smart person that is able to uh, call herself mayor and have such a caliber of talent surround her at one point or another. So thank you all very much for making me look good. Um, you know, I have to say that uh, I was just so very pleased to be able to have the opportunity to appoint Derek to this position. So first of all, uh, Judge Doherty, wherever you are, thank you for working hard and uh, allowing us this, uh, this opportunity to do that. When you have the um, ability to appoint people to the bench, which I have um, on a rare occasion had the ability to do, it really is an awesome responsibility, um, particularly when you live in the community that we live in. I have said to people um, many times that there are lots of people in the city of Syracuse who were born with two strikes against them. And what you need in a jurist is somebody who understands that, somebody who has compassion, but somebody who also understands accountability. And Derek is the kind of person who exhibits those qualities and so many more. Um, he is somebody who cares deeply about people he works very hard every day. Uh, he believes in justice, and he will do justice. I am also uh, now old enough to know that those traits don't unilaterally develop on their own. And I'm old enough as a 46-year-old woman to know that any man I've ever met who is a good man had a good mother. And so I would like to take this moment to thank his mother for um, bringing us there. In one of the short, brief conversations that I had with Derek, because it was all very rushed when I was talking to him about what was going to happen and how it was all going to unfold, he, um, he came over and he gave me a hug. And then he said to me, uh, Mara, I'm going to try to meet your expectations every day. And I said to him, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, Derek, you just have to be Derek and that's all any one of us would ever expect, and that's all any one of us would ever need you to be. So be who you are, as was said by some very smart people who came before me, and you will meet and exceed every single expectation that we have. The other thing that I will take with me for the rest of my life is that when I told Derek that I wanted to appoint him to the city court bench, he looked at me and he was shocked. It had never, he had never thought that, that
that would, it was clear from the look on his face. And the first thing he said to me was, I love you too, Mayor. <laughs> now, Bill, I felt special. I didn't realize I said that to everyone. It's okay, Mayor. It's okay. It's all right. I'm still not going to take it away from me. But I do love him. And um, in this time where we get together as families and we think about how blessed we all are and we think about the challenges that so many people that we know and care about have, I can think of no better way to answer those challenges than to use the power that I have to appoint a person of Derek's caliber to the bench, knowing that long after um, I am mayor, that he will continue to do justice for the people of our community. So with that, I would like to ask Derek to come up and take the pledge. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. And the Charter of the City of Syracuse. And the Charter of the City of Syracuse. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of City Court Judge for the City of Syracuse of the Office of City Court Judge for the City of Syracuse. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Actually, have some questions in regards to the road. <laughs> How many pockets do you get? Uh, things of that nature. Where's the track phone go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, everybody, uh, put your hands together for for Sharon Perry for uh, supervising <laughs> City Court Judge Mary Ann Dory, for Bill Ryan, for Liana for doing the Pledge of Allegiance. And, and of course, for, and of course, last but not least, the mayor. Um, my my only uh, charge in life, and I've said this to the mayor, I said this to to uh, to Judge Doherty, is to is to make them look good, and I've said it to Bill as well, and that's to work absolutely as hard as I could, day in and day out. Um, I thought it was important when, when Mary Ann was Corp Counsel, again, to do my absolute best so that she succeeds at her job and that I succeed as well. And the same for the mayor and the same for Bill, because they gave me the opportunity. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Now, uh, anyone who's, who's worked for the city uh, knows that Chief Lenertz had a moment when he was appointed the fire chief. And the chief had tears and things of that nature. And I swear up and down, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I'm close, I'm close. <laughs> but I'm not gonna cry. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, without, without whom none of this is possible. I would like to thank the mayor, who was truly one of the smartest people I know and that was, and I felt that way before she appointed me as city court judge. <laughs> I am always amazed by her intellect, her insight, and skills as a leader. I am honored to have, the, I am honored to have had the opportunity uh, to work with her 
to call her a friend, a mentor, and my mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for this amazing opportunity to do some great things in our communities. I am truly appreciative. Um, as the mayor indicated, I would like to thank my mother, uh, Lola. T <laughs> please stand. Please stand. I would like to thank my mother. <laughs> she, she raised me to be a fair, compassionate, and kind person um, like herself. Um, she also raised me to respect people and to always do the right thing whether or not anyone was looking. Uh, recently, I read a quote by Thomas Aquinas who said that justice is a certain rectitude of mind whereby a person does what he ought to do in the circumstances confronting him. Uh, thinking back, I can honestly say that my mother has always instilled justice in our household especially when I did something I wasn't supposed to do. <laughs> so that being said, fairness, compassion, and justice are some of the qualities I hope to exude as a city court judge. I would like to thank my wonderful wife, Jerusha. Uh, her beauty is only exceeded by the beautiful and kind person she is on the inside. So please, uh, take a bow. Thank you. <laughs> I tell everyone that she, anyone who listens to me, I tell everyone that she, without a doubt, is my better half, and I could not do any of this without her. Thank you <clears throat> to each of my wonderful children, Derek Jr., Liana, Garrett, and Gaia. <clears throat> it is because of each of you that I humbly accept this opportunity, this responsibility to show each of you and the other little boys and girls in our communities that anything is possible and that there are no limitations as to what you can achieve. <clears throat> so uh, growing up, it was, my, it was my relatives, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, uh, my friends and neighbors who kept me out of trouble because they saw something in me. And I am determined to return the favor and use this position as a platform to inspire and motivate our young people uh, to greatness and to reduce the number of young people who are introduced to the criminal justice system. I would like to thank each of the city court judges uh, you have each welcomed me with open arms, and I look forward to working and learning from each of you. You are not only excellent judges, but better people. Thank you. Give your hands a round of applause. Today. And Judge Doherty, thanks for winning. <laughs> Much thanks to the mayor's office, each city department, everyone in my department, and to each city employee, whom I have come to know as colleagues and friends. We accomplished some great things as a team for the benefit of our city. Uh, thank you to the common counselors. I have developed friendships and relationships with each of you in the performance of our duties as public servants for the greater good of this city. I truly respect and admire um, each and every one of you. And I would like to give a special thank you to some of my friends, like Bruce. I'm looking for Bob's name. I don't know if Bob is here. Um, Chief Fowler, Chief Lenertz, um, Bill, and, and many others who have given me much needed advice and guidance over the years. And, and lastly, I want to thank the citizens of the city of Syracuse. I repeat what I said to the mayor when she appointed me, and the mayor, the mayor has indicated this. I love you too, and I would do my absolute best to make, to make you proud to have me as one of your city court judges. Thank you.
And I just want to say for the record, even though I was close Chief Lenertz, I didn't cry. <laughs> Just a couple of last minute things. I see uh, Judge Joseph and his lovely wife have come in. Thank you, welcome. Um, what I told you earlier, and uh, I don't know if there was a method to my madness that um, Judge Thomas was a keeper. So we've got a, a nucleus of people here tonight and uh, Derek's on a, on a one year pass uh, as an appointment. So he's gonna need your help, hopefully in November, not September. And uh, with that, I'll call on Pastor Sharon Perry to give her a benediction. We thank God for what our hearts have felt. Yes, we thank God for what our minds have witnessed. We thank God for what our spirits have captured. So I say to the people of Syracuse, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his peace to shine upon your face. May he be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace, amen, and good night.